Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments on a daily basis by the grace of God in the word of God. Thank you for joining me today as we conclude our series, Surviving Friendly Fire. What killed Senator Huey P. Newton, Friendly Fire? What killed the racist General Stonewall Jackson? Who, And if there's a statue of Stonewall Jackson, it ought to come down. He was a racist. He was a terrible racist. He tried to destroy American enslaved people, but he was killed by his own troops. What killed Pat Tim and the football player turned soldier? Friendly fire. Who hurt you? A relative, a friend, my wife, my husband, my parents, somebody close to me. When the pain comes or the fire comes from somebody you've confided in, that is friendly fire and you hurt and don't deny the fact that you're hurt. Don't deny your hurts. The beginning of healing is the revealing of feelings. But God wants us not to get even against those who hurt us or this may seem contradictory, but let me go ahead and say it. God wants you to get even God's way. Yeah, God wants you to get even God's way. You know, we live in a, I'm going to get you back society. That's the name of the game. I'm going to get you back society. Well, God wants you to respond, but God wants you to get even or respond in God's way. Because whenever you extract revenge against someone, you're not just digging a grave for them, you're digging a grave for yourself. You're digging two graves at the same time. Matthew chapter five and verse 43 and 44 says this, you have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecuted you. Pray for those who persecuted you. Love your enemies, love your enemies. Now, uh, God, you may say, well, how can I love them when they hurt me so bad? Well, God will never tell you to do something unless God has given you the power to do it. Remember when God said to Lazarus, who was dead, Lazarus, come forth. Now, Lazarus couldn't have come forth uh, on his own. God had to give Lazarus, who had been dead, the power to come forth. And anytime God calls you to, to do something, God will give you the power to do it. So if God says, love your enemy, there's a reason why God wants you to love your enemy, because if you don't, you dig it two graves, and God will give you the power to do it. Now, why should we love our enemies? Well, number one, we should love our enemies because God does. Let me wake you up about something, and that is that your enemy, God is not the enemy of your enemy. God is not the enemy of your enemy. Just because you hate somebody does not mean God hates them. God, in fact, it's hard to tell who God's enemies are. Let me say that again. You can't tell who God's enemies are because of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45. It says, in that way, you'll be acting like, acting as true children of your Father in heaven, for he gives the sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. Now, I would know who was God's enemy because if they were his enemies wouldn't get rain and sunshine. I said, oh, yeah, they're enemies because on their side of the street, they don't get rain. They don't get sunshine. On my side of the street, we get sunshine and rain. But God sends rain and sunshine on the good and the bad, so it's hard to tell who is God's enemy. Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. It's hard to tell. So we love our enemies because God loves our enemies. We love our enemies because we have all hurt someone. We've all hurt someone. I have been the victim of friendly fire, but I have also sent out friendly fire that has hurt some people. Sometimes in my immaturity, I did it. I think back, I've been a pastor for 42 years. And uh, I can look back at some of the things I may have said and done or just didn't show enough appreciation. And boy, if I could just go back and undo some things, 
you know, people who were really good to me that I just may have taken for granted. That's friendly fire. And we all have been guilty of friendly fire. Remember Jesus' little funny parable, Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 and 5? He says this, and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? So he says, you're trying to get the speck out of your friend's eye, and you got a protruding telephone log in your own eye. And someone has made the, 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 has made the good point of saying that the only reason that your friend has a speck in his eye is because where did the speck come from? The speck came from the log that was in your own eye. It's just a part of the log. In other words, you might be creating the problem, the speck in your, your friend's eye because of the law that is in your eye. But the point Jesus is saying is that I'm not in a position to get any speck on anybody else's eye because I got logs in my eyes. And I can't hate anyone who's caused me fire because I have caused fire. Remember Paul and Alexander the coppersmith who hurt Paul and Paul wasn't dwelling on it? And the reason Paul's not dwelling on what Alexander did to him is because Paul participated in the stoning of Stephen. He was a collaborator in the stoning of Stephen. So Paul hurt Stephen. Alexander Coppersmith hurt Paul. So we, 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 we love our enemies, even those who hurt us, because God does, and also because we have hurt someone. In fact, if you were to write down all the things you don't like about a person, and then say, now, what are some of those traits that I don't like about them in me? And you may discover that many of the things you don't like about other people, if you ask yourself, well, am I like that? Do I treat people like that? And you may discover that you, you're much like them. So all of us are in need of grace. And then you can't move forward in life if you're constantly looking back. Because remember that Saul who was jealous of David after he defeated Goliath. And all his life after David, for the rest of his life, after David rose up as the hero of Israel, Saul spent energy trying to wipe him out, throwing spears at him, hunting him down. And at the end of his life, this is what he says in 1 Samuel chapter 26 and verse 21. Then said Saul, I have, I have sinned. Return my son, David, for I will no more do thee harm because my soul was precious in thy eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool. In other words, I've been a fool. And when you become obsessed with what people have done to you and you won't move beyond the friendly fire, then you can say like Paul, like, excuse me, like Saul, I have play the fool. Life's too short to spend on any second of it, a nanosecond of your life, uh, constantly embittered because of what someone has done to you. This is what I would suggest to you do, and that is forgive them, forget them, and move on with your future. Forgive them, forget them, and move on with your future. If God be for you, who then can be against you? And the good news is this, is that you have survived friendly fire, and it's now time to stop surviving, but to thrive beyond it. God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Let's pray together. Dear Father, thank you so much for this week about friendly fire. Help us not just to hear the word, to know it, to learn it, uh, on an intellectual level, but help us to live it out. Help us to let some things go right now so that as we move into a new week on tomorrow, that we are new people moving into a new week. You would never call for, calls, call for us to do something unless you give us the power to do it. Give us the power to move forward. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you so much for joining me this week with another week of powerful points to ponder. If you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us here at St. Stephen Church, newstart at ssclive.org. You may have a question. You may have a concern. You may need prayer. Let someone pray with you. We'll get back with you. Newstart at ssclive.org. Tomorrow, we will come together for worship. I hope you'll join us. Uh, worship begins really uh, with the pre-show that uh, begins at nine o'clock with Miss Crystal uh, Spratt, Crystal Goodner Spratt. She's so gifted. So join us tomorrow at nine o'clock and then I'll be with you with the word that, from the word of God that will bless you immensely. So join us and invite someone to listen in as well. Well, thank you for being with me. I hope you've been blessed this week. If you have something you'd like for me to address, then email me here at St. Stephen Church. Uh, and um, I'd like to address a topic. I don't care what it is. Uh, send me what you want me to talk about, newstartedsclive.org. And I'll try to address from the word of God. I'll spend a whole week on something, you know, and uh, we'll look at some things together. All right. God bless you. Thank you for being with me. And uh, don't forget during COVID-19, you know what I'm going to say. First of all, get your vaccination and then stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. Peace and blessings to you. See you in worship tomorrow.